Okay, before we go any further, let's do a review of series circuits. And this way you would help you to understand constant current sources a little better. The top diagram we have here, we have a 12 volt battery, you have two 6 ohm resistors in series. Our total resistance is the value of adding together the two resistors. So R1 plus R2 is 12 ohms. Our current total is we're going to divide the voltage in 12 volts is going to be divided by R total. 12 divided by 12 is 1 amp. So our current through the resistors is 1 amp. What's the voltage drop across R1? Well, it's the resistance times the current. 6 times 1 is 6 volts. And R2 being the same value, 1 amp times 6 ohms is 6 volts. So note something here. The current is the same through both resistors but the voltage divides. Let's drop to the lower diagram here. We're still using 12 volts, but I changed my resistor values to 8 ohms and 4 ohms. Well, our total is still going to be 12 ohms, 8 plus 4. I total is going to be the voltage in again, divided by our total, which is 12 ohms, is going to be 1 amp again. But what happens with our voltage drop across R1, which is 8 ohms? 8 ohms times 1 amp is 8 volts. And the voltage across R2, again, that's 4 times 1, is going to be 4 volts. Notice something important here. First, the current through each resistor or load is going to be the same. But you notice that the voltages divide based on the resistance. If you add the voltage drop across R1, 8 volts in this case, and R2, 4 volts in this case, 8 plus 4 is 12. So the voltage drop across the individual elements in a series circuit always add back to the source voltage. Let's look at the same circuit as we had before, but this time I'm going up to 24 volts. R1 is still 6 ohms, R2 is still 6 ohms, so our, our total is 12. But this time we're dividing your I total is going to be the voltage in, 24 volts, divided by 12 is 2 amps. So my current now is 2 amps. Of course, when we raise the voltage, Assuming you leave the resistor values the same, you're going to raise the current. If I was to lower the voltage, then the current would drop. But in this case, again, the voltage divides, except it's 6 ohms times 2 amps will give me 12 volts. 6 ohms times 2 amps will give me 12 volts. 12 plus 12 adds back to the source. Let's drop to this one down here. I'm still using 8 ohms and 4 ohms, but I'm using 36 volts. So our total is R1 plus R2. That's 12 ohms again. My I total is your voltage in divided by R total. This time we have 3 amps. What's my voltage drop across in each case? R1, that's uh, 8 ohms times 3 amps is going to be 24 volts and my 12 volts is going to be dropped across R2 the 4 ohm resistor. <clears throat> Again the voltage divides proportionally based on the resistance and note that in all cases the voltage through R1 equals R2 which equals I total. Always that's the way it works. As we saw in our explanation of resistors, anytime you vary the voltage or change the resistance of the load, you change the current and the voltage drops. This is unacceptable when we're lighting up strings of LEDs, particularly LEDs that are high powered for lighting and other purposes. 
So what we're, we want to do is maintain a constant current flow. For this we can use an LM317 as in this example whose current is maintained strictly by the value of a resistor R3. Divide 1.25 by the value of R3. In this case it's approximately 260 milliamps. The reason we want to maintain this constant current is if you look at these four LEDs, the forward voltage drop when they're operating varies just a little bit. Now remember what we talked about in basic series circuits. The sum of the voltage drop of each device in series should equal back to the input voltage. 2.9, 3.2, 3, and 3.1 is 12.2. If you measure the voltage drop across U3 and R3, that's going to be 6.8 volts. 6.8 plus 12.2 goes back to 19 volts. In the process, if we take the 6.8 volts times 260 milliamps, the energy we wasted as heat in this circuit is 1.77 watts. So what we're doing here is no matter what I change this voltage to, um, I could change it to, I don't know, I could change it to 25 volts, I can change it to 18 volts, whatever. The current will be constant. The voltage drop across the LEDs will pretty much be constant. But the voltage drop across U3 and R3 makes up for any difference in voltage. Unlike we had before, where the voltage drops went up, and under this scenario, the only voltage change when we change the input voltage is the drop across U3 and R3. So this is just a basic introduction to series circuits. In my uh, accompanying video, we will go into great details why we want to use these circuits and how to calculate them for lighting up LEDs. For now, I'm your host, Lewis Laughlin. Visit my website at www.bristolwatch.com.